please stand and join us in singing hymn number 210. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you kill the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. from the first book of John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him 
for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in, the, in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of boiled, broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. <clears throat> 
In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please be seated. <clears throat> when I was in seminary, we had a professor of liturgy who is just an absolutely wonderful guy. His name was the Reverend Dr. William Seth Adams, but everyone knew him as Bill. And Bill was just this great, great teacher who was just filled with hospitality. And when he would teach classes, everything that we did was supposed to be grounded in hospitality and done well. He would say, I don't care what it is you do as long as you understand what it is you are doing and that you do it very well. But really, the thing that I took away from him the most was his great sense of hospitality. Now, we were not allowed to take liturgy classes until into our, the second half of our second of three years of seminary. So we were very anxious to get a chance to get a chance to be in Bill's class and to learn from him. And, and many of us had already read some of his books. He was, he was well published. And um, j just this man in Austin, Texas, who, who everyone knew and loved, so when we finally got the opportunity to take his class, we all sat in class. We were just, you know, our pens are ready, and we had our, our prayer books open as, good gosh, there's not a prayer book here. <laughs> we would sit there with our prayer books and get ready because we knew that he was going to tell us something about, ho hopefully, Holy Eucharist Rite too, and we'd sit down and we'd make notes in the margins of our prayer books. But when we got the, to the point where we started class, the very first thing he said, he says, this is the most important thing I'm going to teach you about Sunday worship. Everyone, please pay attention to what I'm going to tell you. And then he turned around, and on the whiteboard, he wrote, remember to unlock the front door. <laughs> a good piece of advice. A great piece of advice. Remember to unlock the front door. It's one of the very first things that I do when I get here to St. Mary Magdalene on Sunday morning is unlock the front door. Unlock the front doors and try to unlock all the rest of the doors so that we can be open and receptive to everyone who wants to be and come here. To all those individuals that we invite into church, the place can at least be open. It is important for us to recognize in this gospel message, we have something that is taking place that is exactly the opposite of remember to unlock the front door. We get this story in the Gospel of Luke where the disciples are locked, have locked themselves in a room and they're scared to death. We're told that they are terrified, that they are afraid. And that Jesus suddenly appears in front of them in body and says, peace be with you. And they're all petrified by what they see. And Jesus is trying to tell them, it's me. It's the same guy that you've been hanging out with for the past few years. It's really me. You can touch me. You can feel me. It's not a ghost. I am the guy that you have been with these past few years. And then to try to put this little bit of a spin on it, which I think is just, for me, is a, is a great visual, Jesus asks, does anyone have anything to eat? I mean, it's a very human, very human reaction. It's as almost as if he walks in and all these guys are, in, are disciples, men and women, are in a room, and he walks in and you can see him opening the refrigerator and said, what do we have to eat? What do you have to share? What is it that you've got to share with someone who comes in looking for a morsel to eat? And then Jesus proceeds to open up their hearts and their minds and to pour into them an understanding of the scripture that he has been teaching all of these past few years. And it says that their minds were opened. Having an open door is an incredibly important first start. Because if the door is not open to church, it's very difficult to bring people in. 
And I want to say that it's not just about physically having the doors open, but having a community that is open and willing to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I think that when I say that, when I'm, talking, when I'm talking about that, I'm talking about evangelizing. I'm talking about spreading the gospel of Christ. I'm talking about letting other people know about the presence, the very real presence of Jesus Christ in our church. As Episcopalians and as Anglicans who have inherited this wonderful Catholic tradition, we recognize that when we celebrate Holy Communion here at this altar, and share it with one another at this altar rail, we are sharing the real presence, the real presence of Jesus Christ. As Episcopalians, that is what we understand that has taken place. The real presence of Jesus Christ is amongst us. And we share that with everyone who comes to the altar rail. In this church, in this parish, We don't discriminate against anyone. Everyone who's seeking, who is hungry and is seeking, the word of God is able to do so. And we do it willingly. We love it. We can't imagine turning anyone away. Jesus Christ is asking us to share the gospel with those in need. Those individuals in our communities that are hungry for the word of God. Now, when I say that and talk about evangelizing, I see in the looks and the faces of some people the same looks that maybe they had in, the, in that room where they were all locked inside, that uh, deer in the headlights look, oh, not evangelize, please. I don't want to talk about it. I just want to come do it and then go home, and I, I don't want to talk about it. Jesus is asking us to talk about it. Jesus is asking us to talk about God in our lives. And I've got to tell you, I know all of you. You have all the information you need. You have open minds and open hearts and wonderful imaginations to ask incredibly important questions. You have all that you need within you to share the love that Christ has for each and every one of us with people out there who are hungry for the word of God. I promise you, you've got all you need. Don't be afraid to share it. But we've got to remember to open the doors. When I was at the cathedral, it was probably my first year after I had been ordained a priest. We have at the cathedral every day at 12.05, we have Holy Eucharist. Now, when it's a downtown, and back in 2000, it wasn't quite moving as fast as it is down there right now. And there weren't a whole lot of people down there, but we had Holy Eucharist every day, every weekday at 12.05. And one day, of course, it was my turn to celebrate Holy Communion. And I got to tell you, the cathedral, we kept it pretty locked down when I first got there. And I'm sitting in the chapel waiting for people to show up for the 1205 service, and I'm waiting, and I'm waiting, and it's 1210, and it's 1215, and I'm thinking, you know, we're having a party here, and no one's coming. I'm sitting there, all vested, ready to go, and then I hear this, And I go, I forgot to unlock the door. (laughs) So I go to the front door, I get my keys out, and unlock the front door, and there are six people standing out there waiting to get in. In the 12, 15 in the afternoon, on their lunch hour, waiting to get into church. The presence of God is with us. God has left us with this wonderful message. He's given us this wonderful example of of himself in in the form of Jesus Christ being with us. And Jesus Christ has left us with the opportunity to spread the gospel that he has come to share and then has given us this very real and outward sign of this inward and spiritual grace, this holy communion to share with others. 
asked him to invite them to come and share a common meal, to come to the altar rail and share in the real presence of Jesus Christ. This is one of the gifts that Jesus has given us. So when you are asked to spread the gospel of Christ, you don't always have to say something you've heard before. You can just do it, and people will see what you are doing. And they will ask you, where did you get that? And you say, this is what I do because I am a follower of Christ. Sometimes what our actions can speak much louder than our words. In fact, if we say the words and we don't live it, it works against us. But don't be afraid to talk about your faith. Because other people are talking about their faith. And I've got to tell you, I've heard some things that I don't know that we would agree with. So if we don't share the message of Christ that we have heard in this church, in this parish, then someone else is going to do it. And I'm not so sure you want them doing it on your behalf. Don't be afraid to share the word of God with somebody. There are people in this community who are starving for the love and presence of God in their life. Don't be afraid to step up. You already have everything you need. It's in your heart. I know it is. Talk about it. Share it. Invite people in. I'll do my best to remember to unlock the front door. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Today's prayers is form three, form four, excuse me, on page 388, form four, 388. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another 
and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. At this time, let us lift up to Christ whatever is on our hearts, first for ourselves, or family members, or friends, or nation, or world. Prayers for Sonny. Remember Eleanor, we lift up Eleanor up to Christ. Pray, pray for Debbie and John and their family. For Grace. For Deanne and Olive. For Trevor. Make your prayers for those who are homeless and hungry. Pray for ourselves that our minds may be open to the word of God and his purpose for ourselves, our lives. Alice. Dana. We pray in thanksgiving for this, our church family, and for all, all of us worshiping together. We pray for all who are mourning at this time. And we pray for the peaceful repose of the soul of Carr, for those who are dying. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the risen Christ be always with you.
Good morning and welcome. Do we have any guests or visitors this morning? We'll invite you to stand and identify yourself. Yes, ma'am. Your name and where are you from? Joan? Uh huh. Well, yeah, yeah, indeed. You found the right place. Welcome. Welcome. Okay. Great. Good to have you here. Welcome to St. Mary Magdalene. Yes, ma'am. Your name and where are you from? Sandra? Uh huh. Welcome. Good to have you here. Good to have you with us. Feels at home, doesn't it? Any, anyone else? Okay. Um, I'm going to start with John Galuli with the announcements this morning. If you'll come up, John. I've been to all three services, and I prayed to God to tell him that I didn't commit that many sins. I'm here just to give a <laughs> speech a little what I'm going to talk about, when Father Mark gave his sermon, you, you probably said, yeah, I'll help, I'll help. Well, I'm going to give you an opportunity this coming Saturday, and we'll see if you'll keep your word that you're going to support our church and spread the word. What I'm here to talk about is Relay for Life. It's being held at Coral Springs High School. The hour is on the 25th. It's coming Saturday. It's different than what it's been in the past. In the past, we went from 5 o'clock Friday all the way over into Saturday. <clears throat> they changed it. And now it's 12 noon to 12 midnight on Saturday. The reason they did that was that a lot of people weren't staying overnight. <clears throat> Father Mark's sermon really hits hits us right in the eye. And I hope that I'll see your faces on Saturday. <clears throat> Again, the hours are 12 to 12. Uh, survivors, there's a little sashing in the beginning, and then there's lunch after that at 1 o'clock. <clears throat> I'll be in the back, and one of the forms I have, if you're a survivor, please fill it out and then bring your caretaker with you and have lunch. Now, Relay for Life is not a run. It's just a walk, and it's to honor past people who have passed away and those who are in remission. And that's what it's all about. Now, this year, our church doesn't have a tent per se, but I happen to be on a team, and it's called Top Gun and you're welcome to come there and get in the shade or whatever. I don't know if you know it, but the five o'clock service ser serves wine. And you can have a nice thing after this service, I know that. I wish I could guarantee you beer, but I can't do that. Anyway, one of the things that happens is people decorate a bag and put names on it, those people who've lost the fight and those people who have cancer. The bags are $5 a piece, and you will be in the back, and you can write the names on the people that you want to do that. All that money goes to American Cancer. Then at 9 o'clock, all the bags are put around the track at Coral Springs High School. There's a candle in there, and that's lighted. And then at 9 o'clock, all the lights are turned out, and people walk a couple of laps in silence. It's a very, very nice ceremony. So I hope, I want to look at my notes so I didn't forget anything. The schedule again is <clears throat> 12 to 12. Your survivor come at 12, and then at 1 o'clock you'll go to lunch. All during the day there's entertainment and people walking the track, and a lot of people that you can converse with. I hope, and I know you're going to come, that you'll tell them you're from St. Mary's. 
St. Mary's Magdalene is the only church in Coral Springs that participates. And what better chance to tell people about our church. So I hope you'll do that. So if you're a survivor, please stop and register. Uh, Leroy was here at the nine of, 8 o'clock service, and he helped me out. And he wouldn't let anybody out of the door unless they bought a bag. So <laughs> I'm not going to do that to you, but I hope you can contribute. <laughs> <laughs> and if, if you want to write a check, you can do that. You make it out to American Cancer. If you want to give a check for other things, you can do that, and we'll see if that money gets on behalf of St. Mary's. Okay, so are there any questions about the relay or what you're going to do? I counted the number of people in here, and, it, and it's Father Mark will know if they showed up or if they didn't show up. And by the way, we fingerprint you too on the way out. <laughs> so please come, please stop, get a bag write the name on, leave it with me, and then we'll put it on the track. Any questions at all? Anything we missed? Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to make a quick announcement. Next Saturday at 1145, there's going to be a volunteer luncheon for anyone who has served in any way at St. Lawrence Chapel. The luncheon will take place at the uh, auditorium at John Knox Village. That's on the east side. Uh, if anyone needs directions or a telephone number to contact to uh, make a reservation that you can make it, I'd be happy to take that or give you the numbers that you need to have to make a reservation. There's no cost. Um, all we're asking people to do is turn up for this volunteer luncheon, but we need to know if you're gonna be there so that we could say thank you. The board will say to you thank you and provide a meal uh, and a program for all persons who have served at St. Lawrence Chapel over the past year. Thank you, and I do hope to see you know, quite a, a good number of us there next Saturday at 11.45. All right, thank you. There is a lot that you'll find when you read your bulletin about upcoming events. Uh, tomorrow evening, there's a vestry meeting at 7. The book group meets Tuesday evening at 7 in the library. There'll be someone in the back for tickets to the Mother's Day tea, which takes place on May 2nd. And the social action group will have um, a small tree with little hats on it. We don't have it yet today, but there'll be um, similar to the Christmas tree, when you take a reminder and get a, a gift card and you bring it back, that way the Social Action Committee can help people out with prescription medicine, gas cards, uh, groceries, those sorts of things, and that'll be up for us next week. So please do look at your bulletin. There's a lot going on. Are there any birthdays, wedding anniversaries, or travelers for blessings? God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on these your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Congratulations. Okay. How many years is this? 36, okay. Yes, how many years? 22. 22, great. Yeah. Hold right hands. Okay. 
O God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send therefore your blessing upon these your servants that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who travel, surround them with your loving care, protect them from every danger, and bring them in safety to their journey's end. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Traveling mercies. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. be with you. And also 
also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death and resurrection and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all Honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen.
Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Will our Eucharistic minister please come forward? Let us send them out together as they go to visit those who are ill or homebound. In the name of this congregation, we send you forth bearing these holy gifts that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body because we all share one bread, one cup. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and always. Amen.
let us go forth in the name of our risen Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.